This is Blisso. And I'm Vic. Come along for the ride as we explore in our old patrol we call Old Mac. Come with us and discover the best camping and swimming spots Australia has to offer and check out the secret spots we find and become a part of our Old Mac crew. Our crew. It is really nice. Well, look who got Lonely and joined me. Well, guys, that was a big morning. I've got my wrist fixed. I've got some steroids for my ears. Got my glasses fixed. <sighs> my whole new woman. Where are we going today, Blisso? Uh, heading out to Mungling up. So we're going to go to the beach, but not till tomorrow. It's half past three time we get to Muslin up, so it'll be about four. So we're going to check out the free camp there. We'll stop off the highway, so. And uh, then head into Muslin up beach tomorrow. It looks like it's going to rain. It's a bit of a car. So we've got a massive headwind, so I'm not going real quick. And just had a bit of a shower, right? So. so we've done all the things in Esperance we needed to do. I got myself sorted, did the dump point some shopping, groceries and things and now we are heading on to new adventures. Hopefully I can get this ear sorted out so I can get in the water. Correct. And she's got earplugs too so that should help. Should be Alright, we, we will catch you in Mungling Up. Well dear, that was pretty interesting. Yeah, that's why it's not a lot. So we're about two hours behind schedule. We um just driving along. I didn't go to sleep, which is something new. Cruising into this um, camp spot we're looking for. We drove past this ute on the so that had rolled over on its side. And just as we drove past, I realized that it must have only just happened because the bloke was still in the driver's seat trying to get out. And I said to Bliss, the bloke's still in there. And we, anyway, we've got the van on, it's a highway, so we've, this is kind of like I club. Just turn around here! Like an idiot, and this going like, I can't just turn around on a dime. We've got to drive up here, turn around safely. So we did that, we got back, and poor old mate was just climbing out of his vehicle. Put some pictures in of what happened, but holy moly bliss. Yeah, very lucky, it could have been worse. We come out of it pretty unscathed, not even scratched, it's a bit knocked around, but a bit shaken up, but yeah. And he didn't really know what happened himself, he just came around the corner and it sort of grabbed and then sort of threw him, and then he tried to overcorrect as it spun. It must have just slid out. I thought he must have overcorrected and then bring him the other way and just spit him off the road, and he just rolled on his side, and as a result, so the wrong side of the road. Yeah, so he was headed in the direction he was pointing, but he was on the wrong the opposite side of the highway in the ditch there, so, yeah, very lucky. So we stayed with him for a couple of hours, um, had to get his kid off the bus and we helped him with that and made sure he was alright and then um, got in touch with a few neighbours and they come down with a skid steer and I checked if it was okay and I'll show you what it looked like flipping yeah, back over. Thing. Oh, it's not a skid steer, it's a telehandler. I don't know what either of them are, but they're farming. So yeah, we'll drop that footage in there, but just goes to show you just take your eye off the ball for a second and bump bump. Yeah, just like that. My man, you drive next minute, climb out your passenger side window yeah. because you're on your side. But anyway, I'm glad he's all right. He's a lucky boy. Uh, he's more concerned about picking his daughter up. So yeah, so uh, we've got to lend him some help now. Or we, we sort of just the bus to drop them off and we just stay there in case they needed some straps and stuff. But we get the ute on his wheel so he can move and so yeah. anyway. It's all that's the third accident that we've come across on this trip that's either just happened or happened in front of us. The other we saw one that where a lot of people were there and when there's a lot of people you just think you're just going to be in the road. So keep going and then um, another one was uh, we saw a that was down in a ditch and the ute was back, it had rolled over but it was back on its 
speed, but it's, his big boat that he was towing was smashed on its side. Yeah, it was on its lid, yeah. I couldn't pull over then. It had a truck up in Ding, and there was nowhere to get off the road. So we're hoping he was on his phone. We could see him on his phone, so obviously he was all right. But we just couldn't get back there. There was just nowhere to turn around. It had a truck up in Ding, so we just couldn't get back to help him, unfortunately. It was really good to see how many people stopped yeah. to check that um, everything was all right. Like there were so many people who just even slowed down and said, do you need anything? Do you need a lift anywhere? Anything I can do? Is everyone all right? Which is really nice. Yeah, it is. This goes to show you, you know, people are there for you. If you're not on your own, if you have an accident or something happens, yeah. so you can count on people and it's good to see them all come together and, help his father out and get his ute on the wheel so he could at least get off the road and then go home with his family. So. Yeah. Anyway, that's us. That's a little two-hour detour. We're still on this highway, um, but we will continue on and see where this free camp takes us. Don't look like no beach camp looks like. No, not at all. <laughs> it's over there somewhere. What happened? Oh, no, after our mate rolled his car yesterday, it was a bit late, so we just come into Mungle enough to get this free camp across from the roadhouse there. Uh, so just park down to the corner there for the night. We'll uh, fuel up here. It's two dollars fifty a litre. That is what it is. And then we'll just head back that way, okay, and go down to Munglana Beach, which is about 25k off the off the highway here. So yep. That's where we're going today. Yep. We've got wind at it. Uh, <laughs> well, so he's got the wind up him about the wind at the moment. He's not he's not a forgiving man. If it's windy and here. Gloomy beach has ruined him. Yeah. If it's windy here, it's going to be worse on the coast, I reckon. Worse on the coast. What do we do? We drive 25k to get blown off the hill and. See what I'm talking about? This is what I'm dealing with. This is Palubi Beach has got a lot to answer for. It has well, ruined my husband. Greenly Beach didn't help or the abundant cliffs either for that matter. <laughs> okay. <Did it? laughs> so this camp is not a special. Um, it was a good free spot to pull off because we were desperado. It was dark, it was late, we had a turkey sandwich and went to bed. Um, there's road noise. But the sites are flat. There was actually how many answers were here last night? Uh, about six or seven. And there was a whole heap of um, equipment, like plant operator equipment, uh, obviously graders where they're doing the road graders and stuff like that. But we did not care. It did the job. It was free. And it was free. And there's toilets up here, and there's hot showers with a two dollar donation. I think you got to go to the road house to get the code or something. But there is toilet showers, barbecues here, and there is a Telstra phone box in here struggling for service or you need some help or something for any reason but yep. it's fuel here everything's here mungling up this is just on the highway mungling up the townships and there we haven't been there. i don't think it's much but yeah for a free camp that's the job yep. yeah sometimes that's all you need there's even a playground for the kids a little playground there but anyway that's us so we will fuel up and head to the beach Romantic walk on the beach there. Isn't that lovely? Lovely, lovely. We were in Munglin Up Beach. Uh, camp, we're at the campground, which is just over behind the dune over here. Just going for a wander to check out the snorkeling spots for tomorrow. Just gonna have one more day out of the water just to make sure Vic's here is better. And we're in tomorrow. It was quite lovely weather when we got here, but the clouds were moving for a bit, so it's a bit, a bit dodgy at the moment, but I reckon the sun will come back out shortly. We're just having a walk here, it's lovely. We'll show you around the campsite later. And um, yeah, we'll do some snorkeling swimming tomorrow. Looking forward to that. The beach, apparently on this point over there is the inlet, just on the other side, it's the mouth of the inlet. It goes in the old Fields Creek, I think it's called. Apparently there's some good fish in there, but we're going to try a squid and probably on that point around here, so we're just going on a reconnaissance mission. Just to see what it 
what's all about. Check that out. It's even calmer in among them rocks. Looks deep enough for a good snorkel. That'd be a fantastic snorkel spot. Yep. How good's that? I'm just going to take you for this quick walk around the campground um, before it gets any busier. We've got three out of 14 spots taken here, so it's pretty quiet. So that's our site here, number 14. That's our big area. It's a nice big site. It's the most sheltered of the lot, I reckon. Closest to the beach, so we've got this table and chairs shelter here right next door. That's probably more for day use. There's bins here. And that's the access out to the beach just here, so you walk straight down there, there's your beach, you should be able to see the ocean there hopefully. And then, so you come in this side, so when you come in, if you go on to the left, the left track is this one just here, it brings in there, you just park here with the day use area, so people just park here, use the beach, use the tables and chairs, but on this side, if, say, if you turn right, there's a sign down there to us, yeah? It brings you to the campsite, so there's like bays, which is fantastic. And they're all on this one side, and they all go down there. There's 14 of them in total, as I said. There's a couple of spots, they're bigger spots, but there's two vans in the one spot. So this is what you're looking at. This is site number 10. Doesn't look very big, but you easily get a 18 20 foot band in there, I reckon, and this unhook though. You have your bins, drop toilets, there's water there, you can wash your hands, you can't drink it, it's tank water. So it's access all the way in here by the last 7Ks is sealed. Then you've got 7Ks of this type of road, a little bit rough in places, but nothing too sinister. You can have fires in here, but not up. After the 1st of November, there's fire restrictions, so from this point on where we are here now, we can't have fires. It tells you on the post there. So that's good, it's nice, it just clarifies it so you know exactly what's going on. Well, this is where you're coming in, so you can see there, day use campground. So yeah, that's what it is. Fantastic little spot, fairly sheltered all the way through here from the wind, but as you can probably hear, there is wind blowing straight down here off that uh, beach access track there, so it's not too bad. $15 a night, I'm sure. That's what it says on Wiki, so, but we're still waiting for the lady to come around to collect fees, so we'll know more then. Just a little bit of information here. Yeah, oh yeah, here we go, see? $15 per night per site. It's not a national park, I thought it was but it's not, so I'll get the drain up later, probably tomorrow on a nicer day. going on here? Pizza. Pizza for dinner. Look at it. That's sensational. So when, when we make pizza we use, see that that's um, actually just a wrap and wraps last for ages so they're the best things to um, make a quick pizza with and then we also use cabanossi. Cabanossi is simple it lasts for ages and it's delish so there's our pizza also don't you reckon in your caravan when you've been doing it a while everything's got to have multiple purposes to kind of make the cut and so this 
chopping board here it's a chopping board but it's also like we use it for this from pizza which we have a fair bit and because we got a wooden one so that also you can clean it up and use it for a cheese board so if we have to like play nice with other people and take something which you do every now and again when you're kind of traveling around you meet up with people and you kind of have drinks in the afternoon i can kind of tidy this up and put a bit of cheese and bickies and fruit on it <laughs> i don't put fruit on it um but i could and yeah so it has kind of multiple purposes which gets it a spot in the van all right, big dog, get into your pizza. I'm gonna get in it before it gets cold. Exactly. Happy days. Well, here we are at Mungalana Beach. Finally getting in for a swim after a few days out of the water with Vic's ear. Look at it. Waiting for no man. Ah. Yesterday was a really nice day. Today, not as good. Only because the sun's not out, but ties up a bit so it's a little bit deeper we're going out there see what we can find eh let's go and get into it thing and when you get caught in a rip like that like we both looked up at the same time we were swimming together and we both just looked up and realized that we were caught in a pretty strong rip and we just let ourselves go and swam across until we hit this sandbar here so we actually went really fast and I could see the panic starting to get in blistered eyes but um yeah straight onto the sand bank with the current and we're fine but you can see it is absolutely pulling to the right coming around straight past these rocks and head straight back out there yeah. and then when you get out there you come back in but you can drag over all those rocks yeah which is we're both wearing these gloves might look a bit silly we only got one pair so we're wearing one each with the kevlar so if worse comes to worse, like I like them because you can grab things you're not sure are going to bite you or not, but they're also good to 
grab hold of a rock and steady yourself if you have to because the, the rocks and stuff are, are quite sharp so you can actually grab one with your gloves and stuff so anyway we'll go and have a coffee get out looks like the tide's right up and uh when it's right up it's not that great for snorkeling so we might come back down this afternoon what do you reckon Glitho? i think so we'll just wait for that instead of like that wasn't like that when we come in <laughs> now look at it <laughs> <laughs> anyway it was still awesome and we got to see a heap of stuff so that was really cool <sighs> morning guys well we've just left mangling up it was an awesome camp oh look at that little tributary there nice just left mungan up we've been there for three nights which we and we absolutely loved it still haven't found any really warm weather um, last night was really cold both in tracky dacks and jumpers um, but the snorkeling was maze balls the campsite was really lovely $15 a night cash to the caretaker when she comes around in the afternoon um, out of the wind but easy walk to the beach so yeah it was really great what do you think Lissa? yeah it's good yeah. i was thinking about staying another night but um so it's time to move on i think so yeah yeah it was good it had uh the toilets there as well drop toilets and bins so that's always handy as well yep no service at all but we had the starling so we just turned that on when we needed it yep and we didn't flatten the batteries we did not flatten the batteries we were uh, very sensible and now we're on our way to have a look at Starvation Bay. Um, you're supposed to book it online, which is fine, but we'll get down and have a look. And if it's, we don't want to stay, we're not committed. And then we, if we want to stay, we can book while we're there. We'll just set up a Starlink. If we have to, if there's no reception, then we'll book it. I think it's 19 bucks a night, haven't we? Yeah. And then there's Basins Bay down further towards Hopeton. And then if we don't like any of those, we can go up to Hopeton for a couple of days. Yeah, it's a free camp there, so we'll just see when we find when we get there. I'm keen for Masons or Starvation because, well, especially Masons, I think it's supposed to be good for snorkeling. It was so good for snorkeling um, where we just were at Munglin up, but it's got such a strong current, like a really bad rip, as soon as the water starts coming over the reef. So it was really, you know, one minute you'd just be swimming around like fish everywhere beautiful reef next minute you were just getting yanked sideways so um, that's just one thing that you'd probably have to be careful of because when we first got there we said how awesome would this be for kids to learn how to snorkel because you've got that beautiful protected bit between the reef and the beach um, but yeah that current was vicious on the bliss yeah yeah it was a bit of a worry it had just come out of nowhere one minute big sea be fine but uh, and it's a fairly quick steep end too like it's not shallow for a long way out it gets deep pretty quick yep that's another thing to be uh, factoring if you've got young ones as well so yep anyway you got to be careful in any water you go into because you just don't know what it's going to do yep and so make sure you're confident or you ask someone or whatever you need to do before tackling some of those waters yep all good holy moly look at this what big we, machine what, what have we got here is that what i want Oh, it's an older version, sort of type. It's not a mold, but it's some like an old army bus or something. Oh, I want a uni mog, and Bliss said, even if we win the lottery, I'm not getting a uni mog, which is kind of rude. Well, you never know. If we won the lottery and got enough out of it, it'd probably look at well. <laughs> so that's a no. All right, first stop, Starvation Bay. Starvation Bay. There's toilets, dump station, information, day use area, um, boat ramp. We're not 100% sold. It's a bloody rabbit, Warren, trying to find somewhere, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, so there's a sign there. Shows you where to go. So, anyway, we're going to drive down and check out the. There's not. We haven't seen a single person in this campsite yet. But we're about to drive down and check out the ones closest to the water, so maybe there'll be someone down there. Uh, there's camps in here, but they're all sort of bush type camping. We just drove into there, the toilets, we're sending the toilets down there. That's sort of a one way you're going to go in and do a U and come back out when you get out there. It's 
bit of a weird setup, but anyway, we'll go check out what's down here. So we moved on from Starvation Bay. We didn't end up stopping. Um, no real reason. It's a pretty crappy day, so it's not ideal swimming, and it's really a windy day. We could have got out of the wind there, but it's 20 bucks a night, pretty much, just to sit in the bush. And then we were talking to a bloke who was there, and what did he say, Blissa? Oh, they, for three weeks, they're having a annual getaway with the boys, so they're pretty much going to be on the on the piss for three weeks. And a boys trip, uh, and they're coming down the Mason tomorrow for two days to do the same. So uh, yeah, so he's just sort of pre-warning or something, just to let us know that's what the story was. So. Yeah, we sort of could have got away from them, but they got buggies and stuff. Who knows? They could be driving them things around all the time. It wasn't. It wouldn't be a big deal. I yeah. mean, we could tuck ourselves away in a quiet corner, and it really wouldn't worry us. But can't swim. Twenty bucks a night. It's going to be noisy. Might as well just move on and have a look at Masons. Yeah, we'll have a look at it. The same thing. If you see, you would just explain if we get up away from the ocean a bit. This quite good size spots but they get a bit smaller and very breezy or blowy when you get down to the lower section so we're just going to have a look. Worst case is we'll end up in hometown at the free camp there for the night and um, yeah we'll see. Yep. All right keep on track and we're heading to Mason's. Pretty good. Should have got Vic to do that. Should have. Would have been awesome. Would have been good for. Yeah. It wasn't a hard one. Exactly. Pretty much straight forward backwards. Easy. Straight forward but straight back. No problem. Heaps of. <laughs> no way. Why not? No. You could do that. Yeah, should have. Now that van's easier to back than that big trailer. Really? Once you get it straight. There's the problem. <laughs> anyway, we better set up, I suppose. We better. We better set the Starlink up and see if we can actually stay here. Yeah, make sure right. we can book this before we get too set up. Yeah. We haven't actually looked. Yeah. There's no service here. So we'll just do that right. Better do that right now. Yeah. Better we do. We better. is this Blissot? It's very early morning. Very early morning. Right. In Western Australia, the birds start at like 20 past 3 a.m. It's 
420 now. 420 a.m. And we're attempting to have a sunrise, but I don't know how good it's going to be. We think we might have missed it. I don't reckon we missed it. I think the clouds is going to be might be a bit too much cloud at the start, but it is sort of clearing, so we're going to have a crack. Yeah. The best we can do. One time only. That's a big idea. So. I had itchy feet because I left the window open last night, and Bliss got up to do a wee, and I was like. <gasps> We're both awake. Why don't we just go and see if the sun rises while we watch? Well, I think it's going to come out over here somewhere. Possibly there or there, but it's hard to tell with a bit of cloud. But I don't know if it's cloud or it's still waiting to get up, but you can see up here it's catching. But it's sort of clearing. Anyway, we'll see what happens. If it comes up, we'll show you. If it don't, we're going back, we're going back to bed. It's not looking good. The clouds are just moving in quick. Look how fast they're moving. Yeah, it's starting to close up while I look a bit over there. I don't know if we're going to see much, but it's a true east west sunrise sunset day. It's coming up there, going down over there, in line with the ocean. That's the best I've got. <laughs> That's pretty good this early in the morning. And wife is freezing. Yeah. Try again another day. Yeah, it's probably won't. <laughs> Never know. Never know. Well, after we congratulated ourselves for getting up and checking the sunrise and then not actually seeing it rise, we slept in. Yeah. What do you, you think of Masons? I like Masons yeah. compared to Starvation. Um, it's on par with Mungling Up. Maybe a tad better if you pick the right days. Um, but yeah, it's nice. I like it. It's a bit compacted in the spots and places, so you um, pick the sites well. Yeah. The 31 32 looks like a big site, but you put two bands in there, there's very little room. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a good place. Yeah. Down the bottom there. It's right on the water and it's barely protected from the wind. Yeah. Um, but just we picked a not so good a day. It sort of rained last night, it's written in the rain again today. So plus there's a big shindig on there tonight so we're out the door. Yeah. But I'd definitely go back. Yep. Yeah. Good snorkeling and swimming there because there's an offshore rock reef. So oh, how far offshore do you reckon that was? Oh, I mean 500 metres. Yeah, 500 metres off which makes it a really and there's lots of rocks and formations and stuff under the water so it's really good diving on a good day i went yesterday but the visibility was really low because it was such a stormy swirly day still a good swim and a look but yeah it just had potential to be so much better so where are we going today big dog we're going into hopeton for a start which is about 40 k's one other way i'm just going to see we come at this t section we're going in there, probably get some bread and stuff, and then either we'll stay at the free camp or we'll start heading to Ravensaw. It's fairly early. Oh, we got up at 10, so it's 11 o'clock now. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll make a decision when we get there. If it's yeah. going to rain, I'm pretty happy to move, just have a driving day. Yeah. But I don't want to miss out on anything, so we'll see what it's got to offer. There's a couple of caravan parks there we may check them out we may stay in one of those for the night just because it's crappy there's no soul it'd be good just to have the power to sit in the caravan and just watch telly <laughs>